So we have put our spot illustration and our poster design through all the steps. I think I just want to limit my touch-ups a little bit more, take it down. There we go. So they're not so obvious. And all the steps here except one. Oops. So that last step is CMYK color separation. So what is the difference between this one and this one? <laughs> you can just see little tiny dots. That's because this is imitating what it would be like if it was professionally printed. When you professionally print, you don't have the millions of, of colors that an RGB screen can create. Instead, you're limited to three colors and one black ink. So cyan, magenta, yellow, and black on white paper to give you the illusion of all the colors of our visible spectrum. But it's severely limited. It takes millions down to thousands. Yes, Miles. Why do you still have to do these red, green, and uh, yellow? Yeah, great. We'll get into it. So if I wanted to print this professionally, not on a fine art printer, not on an on-demand site, um, I would want to turn it into CMYK and to color separate it. So if, for instance, if I'm going to screen print my own full color poster of this, I would want to know how to CMYK color separate it. And why isn't that RGB, right? And what are the different modes? There's one last step I want to do, because whenever I do a dark background, even though this has a nicely diverse, diverse texture, I want to run a gradient over it so it's a little different top to bottom. So on top of my backgrounds, I'm just going to add a layer, and I'm just going to use my gradient paint bucket, so the gradient tool directly. And I'm going to use, let's see, under basics, nope, I want just a nice warm to cool. So I might take pastels or iridescent. There we go. Something like this. And then I'm just going to paint it this way. Warm to cool. Now, I can rasterize that. And I can play just with opacity. But if you want that kind of diverse texture, this is for anyone that just has solid backgrounds. This is where you can use that dissolve blending style. And just break it up slightly. Right? If your background is already broken up, you can always just use overlay or pin light. <coughs> And then I can use something like levels and increase the contrast. So it's darker on the bottom, brighter at the top. Or the reverse, right? You can try flipping it. But it's always good to have some variation in your background. Yeah, so I like that, I think, a little bit more than just straight. Okay, so now I'm ready to print it and get it color separated. So I save my work. I have some very intense colors, especially this pink that's in the, the lettering. That's the kind of thing that's going to be limited when it goes to CMYK. So the first step, save it as a PSD for yourself. Then we're going to flatten it and save it as a TIFF that is print ready. So I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to say image size. Make sure it's a printable size. This is plenty big. It's basically a little bit larger than 16 by 20 by 350. And then I'm going to save it as a TIFF, an archive format, with LZW. That should all be familiar. I'll do it to the desktop. And I put PR in front of it. This is now a print-ready poster. 
If I want to put it up to Redbubble, I also have to save it as a PNG or a JPEG, an online file format. Okay, there's my TIFF. Mark it as purple. There's my TIFF. Remember, I did not overwrite my assignment 6 PSD. It's still there. It still has everything in it right there. Okay, now I'm going to go to channels. We've never looked at channels before. It's right next to layers. It's been there the whole time. What channels is, this is going to answer your question, Miles, about why the inks that they are, right? Channels shows us RGB mode, which is the, the default mode in a raster program. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. That's because this is how our computer sees our image. It sees it with red lights, blue lights, and green lights. If I only turn on the green and blue lights, this is what my image looks like. Because red and gr or green and blue lights turned up full actually give you yellow. That's because light is additive. When light is turned on, it's bright. When it's turned off, it's dark. Right? So it's the opposite of ink. If I do green and red, this is what I get. And I actually get some really bright cyans and yellows with the red and green turned up all the way. And you can see what they're turned on all the way on my white border. Because when you get white on a computer screen, that means all the lights are turned on at 100%. What's cool about light is it can be dimmed, right? So if we isolate to just the blue channel, this is what my blue lights are doing on my computer monitor but it's shown in grayscale because that's how computers see in binary. If it's white, the light is turned on. If it's black, the light is turned off. So the lights are turned off everywhere that's dark and turned on all the way everywhere it's white and where it's gray, the blue lights are turned on a little bit of the way. We add green to it, we add red to it, we get our full, our full visual spectrum, RGB, millions of colors. Now what happens if I go to image mode, no longer RGB, but CMYK. Now I have slightly different colors. So I'm going to go in my history to show you that. This was RGB color. Let's check out the pinks especially. This is CMYK. Do you notice the difference? Just shifts a little bit. This is a little bit more intense. It's less intense on the projector than it is on my computer screen. And then this is what can actually be printed. It deadens everything a little bit. You go under image and mode, but only do this on a flattened TIFF file. This is to color separate it. I do that because then in CMYK mode on everything, the combined channel, you know, the flattened layer. I can then use dodge and burn. In the midtones. To kind of make up for some of that. That change, the deadening of the color, because sometimes it will make things appear less bright. Or less dark, right? And dodge and burn will saturate as well and then I can use sponge tool too if I think I'm losing some of that detail right but by and large I think this CMYK can work pretty well you can see how the color holds all that subtlety in the blade is still there it's just not quite as pronounced all right so next going to save that. This is my TIFF file. Now it's in CMYK mode. And if I convert it back to RGB from CMYK, it will look exactly the same. So you only lose your color and your quality when you first change it from RGB to CMYK. And it gives you a little warning saying that, that that's going to happen. So this is more similar to what you can do with professional printing inks. Now, this is the fun part. How does a computer see the image, or basically how does a printer see the image 
when it's not made of light, when it's made of ink. This is the black layer, right? Black inks, when printed at full black, right, are 100%. So I might take that black channel and I might adjust its levels and make sure that black is 100% black just by pushing that black slider right to the edge of the histogram. So that my black line art is truly black, right? And now that black is just a little bit darker than it was before, which means it, it will optimize its printing. But there's a problem with the way the computer is showing it here in channels. This is pretending that your printers can print with ink wash like they can with light, that they're not only printing with solid black, but they can also print with gray, right? With all these kind of gray tones. And your printer can't print with all those gray tones. It can only print with a solid ink that's somewhat transparent. So I'm gonna save it there, and we're gonna to go to assignments, and assignment six, our poster assignment, and my slides for an exhaustive expl explanation of CMYK color separation. Color separation is more than just separating it out into these channels. It means that in order to print uh, grayscale in those channels or gradients in those channels, well, you have to break them up into what are called bin day dots, named after Benjamin Day who came up with them. And this is all from the 20th century. There are two ways to break up into dots. You can do what's called an indexed dither or a diffusion dither, which is more random, or you can use a halftone pattern, which is more mechanical. I love the halftone pattern because it's what we see in old comics, and it has this kind of retro vibe to it to color separate, and we see you know, really great graphic design uh, mimic it like in Into the Spider-Verse. Pop artists use it. Lichtenstein loved it, right? And so that's what I'm going to show you here. So what you need to do is you need to change it into CMYK channels. Then you need to isolate the channel you want. I'll start with black because it's the most basic. And then you need to go to image mode and change it to grayscale. And you have to discard all the other channels. So you're going to have to do this four times from your original TIFF file. Right now it's grayscale just showing me what the blacks are doing, but you notice there's gray. So now I have to change it. We've changed it from RGB to CMYK, isolated a channel, then changed it to grayscale, because that's the film work for it. And then we're gonna go to image mode and we're gonna change it to bitmap mode. Bitmap means that it can only see in black pixels and white pixels, because a bit is the smallest type of computer memory it's a one or a zero. It's a switch turned on or off. It's black or it's white, right? So when you get to bitmap mode, you get this screen. And this is how you want to separate it. And this is where you can choose a diffusion dither or a halftone pattern or a custom pattern or something else. So here on the output, I'm going to put 350 because that's how many dots it will output per inch. That means it will be super clean, like a really high-end screen. But if I want it to actually show up so I can see the dots to get that retro effect, I'm going to do take it all the way down to 30. So this is like bad halftone printing. Then I'm going to say OK. And the next thing is you have to say the, um, the angle of it. And that's where these halftone screen angles come in. Black is always at 45 degrees. That's what you need to remember. All the other colors need to be at least 30 degrees off of black. And yellow is always at zero degrees, which is also 90 degrees, right? So you can see how that halftone pattern changes. When they all layer up together, you get what are called Gaussian roses or Gaussian rosettes. And the rosettes are created by the offsetting of those angles. Because if they were all printed at 45 degrees, you would just get mud, because all the dots would land on each other exactly. And though the inks are somewhat transparent, they are not transparent enough to mix the color just by being on top of each other. They're mixing the color optically. So.